Welcome to another episode of the State of the Bulldogs. We have Grant and Mike tonight coming off a top 10 win against Mercer. Citadel up next on the slate. But first, boys, uh, it's Sunday. Currently, fingers crossed that the Mets can force a Game 7 against the Dodgers for a Subway Series because nobody except the executives want to watch Dodgers, Yankees, and I guess casuals. But Mike, Grant, how are you all? Good. Big week after a big win, which we talked about in the post game. Ready to roll for another week? Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have asked for a better Saturday slate for my teams. That's right. Do you have the uh, cigar ready, Mike? I did not. I had a <laughs> two year old and a six month old nephew in the house. So there you go. You know. Probably going to avoid the second. Smart. Smart. Not smart. Have been happy with me. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome, though. I mean, you can't, like, we came in, we talked about this Mercer team last week. None of us thought we could do this and to come out and win in the way that we did just kind of blew my mind uh so that brings us to the first question around the horn roll tide and war eagle r.i.p is the mercer win a turning point or is it just a bright spot in an otherwise mundane season mike let's start with you uh let's hear your thoughts on the game and then also just the answer to that question yeah i haven't uh you know wasn't on the Post game show, so I'm not sure exactly what your thoughts were. Um, I want to think it's a turning point, especially given where our record is in the SoCon right now, and the fact sure. that we do potentially have a chance to still win the conference with the top dog out of the way. Um, we're not going to start every game with three short fields uh, and <laughs> a deep ball that just happens to hit to go up 28 nothing. So yeah, yeah, you know, but. Aside from the 28-point lead that we essentially started with, I still feel like they played really well and they forced turnovers and managed to kind of hold their own against a really dominant defense. So maybe our offense is starting to click enough where where this is a turning point, but I do think that the way that Mercer started that game with the turnovers and giving us those short fields, um, I'm, I'm taking it with a little bit of a grain of salt there. Sure, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. Uh, Grant, is it a turning point? You would hopefully think it is. So I would answer yes to this question because obviously a slow start losing West Georgia. We've talked about all that, the loss of ETSU last week. You get this big win, everybody really excited. And it, and it should feel like a turning point, especially with the schedule coming up. You're at Citadel this week, and then you host Walford, then host Tennessee Tech before we have your two biggest games of the year at Chad and host uh, West of Carolina. So I think it, it could. It could be a really big turning point, especially with what you have coming up. You still got to take take care of business, obviously, but still you have some games against lesser opponents that you can get more confidence in before you get to November 16th in a month at, at Chattanooga. Yeah, no, and it'll be interesting to see, uh, looking up Tennessee Tech right now, if they're going to be anywhere close to being ranked. I, d- I doubt it, uh, but that would obviously be something that – would just bolster the resume because that West Georgia game, if everything kind of comes down to it and we get second in the SoCon, that West Georgia game is an albatross uh, around our necks. And um, it's going to be a tough one to shake, but let's see Tennessee tech. And UAB lost us too. And uh, Troy lost on Tuesday. So Sanford was the only like main football team to actually win a game this week. So, Oh, I didn't realize West Georgia is two and five. Hmm. (laughs) Yeah, they suck. I'm sorry. I should say that because after we lost them, we'd said, let's keep track just in case. Yeah, they beat Shorter that's a, yesterday. That's unnecessary. Okay. I have Tennessee Tech schedule. So they are currently two and five. Not going to be ranked by the time that we play them. Uh, but that will be hopefully a dub. Their last win came on September 28th against Gardner Webb. So. An interesting, like like we said in the in the post game, Mercer was definitely the hardest game on paper we have left. Western though is looking very good as the season continues. Cole Gonzalez off to a slow start overall, uh, but they put a fifty two this week, so the offense is starting to resemble what we saw last year. Going to be interesting to see. Uh, next question, boys. Next question. So switching a little bit to basketball, Grant, would you mind? showing the uh, basketball polls for everybody on the YouTube. Uh, but SoCon Media Day just happened for basketball, and we have the uh, the media poll. And I want to know to you guys who jumps out as the biggest surprise. So uh, for our podcast listeners, we've got Sanford at number one, Chattanooga number two, uh, ETSU at number three. Those are the only schools to get over 60 votes. 
Uh, Wofford at four, Furman at five, UNCG at six. Uh, all those schools had over 40. And then Mercer, Western, Citadel, VMI bringing up the bottom four. Any surprises? I mean, we know the portal just turns everything over uh, or can. But what jumps out to you? We'll start with you, Mike. Uh, two thoughts. So one, and Sam, I think you mentioned this before we started recording, but Philowich being on there, uh, kind of <laughs> surprising because he's been around the league for a while and has never really impressed any of us that much. Uh, yes. Looks like the rest of these names are all pretty much guards, so maybe they just had to throw a big man on the list. Uh, but I also think, I might be wrong, but I think Colin Holloway is the only uh, transfer on this list. So yep. if that's the case, I think that says a lot about uh, his potential and how highly people are um, looking at him this year, which you know we've all been saying since we landed the guys. So hopefully a big season uh, from Colin Holloway this year. That's a good point, Mike. I wasn't even thinking about that. And yes, it is embarrassing that Kyler is selected as a preseason uh, awards candidate. Grant. Uh, just one more thing on uh, Filowich. He shot 30% from the free throw line for a D1 college basketball player to shoot 33% from the free throw line. Like I, someone said the other day, you got to go to a Rick Berry granny style at that point. Like something else has oh, to for change sure. for you to do that. Be working. But yeah, uh, Rylan Jones on the all uh, conference team as well. A uh, ten guys all conference team, sure, whatever. Only five can play. Can play at one time on the court, but whatever. Uh, top ten, uh, Western Carolina. Just seeing them at eight, it's just weird seeing them down there. Obviously, after last year, they had uh, basically the best team in school history, and they finished fifth. And you lose your coach, you lose all those guys minus one. So it is maybe not shocking to see them down there at eight when you look about when you think about the team specifically, but still it's just weird seeing them down there with Citadel and VMI after that, after what we saw last year. Oh, it's definitely weird. It's definitely weird. Uh, and then last one, this is more of a um, hypothetical or uh, rhetorical question, but uh, we finally had a good football broadcast. Can it continue? And did they take a picture of where everything is plugged in? Hopefully. Yes. Because it was good, guys. We even, we even had the band in the background. I thought I was watching Fox for a hot second. It was fantastic to finally be able to hear the commentator, hear the crowd, hear the band, and see the football. Game. We even, we had local ads. I, I know what I need to go buy now in Birmingham. I was like, this is amazing. Uh, what I'm do you need to go buy? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I'm playing, <laughs> okay. But- it, okay. <laughs> it was just so, oh my gosh, it was so nice after two weeks ago. Uh, and they have a, they have an off week this week. Just one more opportunity to practice, get a little bit better, and then run it back out uh, for homecoming. So hope, f- fingers crossed that they took a picture. But have to give the shout out to the broadcast team who really turned it around. Uh, really turned it around. All right, boys. Citadel is up this week. Coming off a hot win against VMI, the battle uh, of the Silver Shakeout. Poor Rocco. Poor Rocco. That, this was probably the one game we had for him that they could win, and he did not prevail. The uh, Citadel Kedats, or Citadel Kedats, Citadel Bulldogs won 13 to 10 on Saturday on the road, nonetheless. Uh, but their other two games, they lost to Western 30 to 16 and then lost a close one to Furman 17 to 16 who uh, is not looking good at all, Furman, that is. Offensively, Citadel runs the same offense I ran in high school, so I am partial to it. I think it's a highly effective offense for what you want to do, and that is keep games competitive as possible when you have an athletic disadvantage. It's basically the old Florida offense that won them a nat- couple of natties uh, with Chris Lee, kind of a spread option type look. Not as flashy as the Oregon uh, version, kind of a little more dumbed down, but – Still, nonetheless, a pleasant a pleasant football viewing experience. A little bit better than the classic triple option. They only average 22 points a game and 314 yards. Uh, it's kind of split 161 through the air and then 152 on the ground, so pretty balanced attack. They don't have a prolific passer. Uh, their quarterback has five touchdowns and six interceptions. Uh, but it is important just to note that they do keep it balanced. So we're not just going to be bored all day, I guess. One interesting stat offensively, they got a tough time scoring in the red zone. Uh, against Western, a game that they kept pretty tight for most of the game, they went one for four overall, like not even just one for four for touchdowns. They went to the red zone four times, scored one time. 
that's something that would bode well for Sanford because it seems like this offense just doesn't operate efficiently enough to where if it does somehow get down into the red zone, it's come up, kind of out of plays, out of steam by the time it gets down there. And it certainly doesn't have enough explosive plays. Uh, I mean, they only average 22 points. So the offense isn't necessarily a strength. It sh- I'm trying to be polite, but this should be a game the Sanford defense uh, handles well. They got two running backs, primarily Corey Ibrahim and Cooper Wallace. Corey does average four yards a carry, which is nice. Um, but uh, outside of that, there's nothing too spectacular to point out. Uh, and then this is the interesting thing. So at wide out, we pointed this out against Mercer, but again, some big bodied receivers. And the secondary, as we noted in the Mercer post game and pretty much every post game, has been a weak point for Sanford. So if Citadel does get into the red zone, look for uh, Dervon Pesnell. I think I spelled that right. Dervon Pesnell. He's 6'4. Big dude. Big dude. Uh, and then Tyler Cherry is 6'1. Uh, their speedster, Javante Gaves Billups. So those three guys are the are the primary targets. Um, but yeah, six four just stood out as a, as a nice red zone target defensively. Uh, so they average twenty two points on offense. They allow twenty two points on defense and three hundred fifty two yards. Uh, they have twenty one sacks and they forced eleven turnovers, primarily fumbles. Uh, the one guy on defense that really stood out was Thomas Wyatt. He's a junior linebacker. He's three and a half sacks, nine tackles for a loss, and leads the team with 68 total tackles. And Dominic Poole leads the team uh, with INTs and two with two. So that's a high level overview of the Citadel. They are not a team that's going to wow you. They didn't. They don't play particularly uh, hard or fast. But somehow, like I watched the Western game, <clears throat> somehow they were able to kind of patiently find holes and were able to run for, I think, 200 yards. Uh, that's off the top of my head, so don't hold me to that. But they were able to find enough gaps and take advantage without – I mean, they're H-back, so they're tight end slash fullback who this game uses really to, block, to be the lead blocker uh, on the give option is not that fast and he's not that big. And somehow he was blocking some of these Western defenders. So that was one surprising thing. Uh, I don't know if, if coming off of that Mercer win or uh, yeah, coming off that Mercer win, if we want to conjure up too much West Georgia vibes, but this does feel like a team where we might play down to the competition. If that makes sense. Uh, If we do kind of want to go doom scenario, uh, but that was just one odd thing with Western is they're somehow effective without necessarily looking like they should be. So with that said, Grant, Mike, let's hear some thoughts on what's hopefully another dub. Yeah, Citadel kind of leans on the ground. Like you said, they have 152 rushing yards per game, which is good for third in the conference. Not as proficient passing the ball. They've only have 161 pass yards per game, which is eight in the SOCON, and they're eighth in receiving yards as well. So they're not going to... And kind of the same thing we've said about Sanford's opponents the last few weeks before we get to Western Carolina at the end of the year. They're not going to challenge the Sanford secondary as much, although Mercer kind of had to the other day because they were down so many and they kind of just keep sure. throwing it and I get back in the game. So another game where the Sanford secondary shouldn't be tested as much, which we kind of think is kind of if we had to pick kind of the weak point, which we haven't kind of the weak point of this defense so that you don't have to worry about that as much. It's all about We'll be all about stopping the run. Make sure you get Citadel into office into obvious passing situations. So, Mike, yeah, I'm excited to to face a team that's not very strong in the passing game. Um, well, we said that about ETSU too, and we should have won that game, Sam. And we made them look good. <laughs> that's true to a quarterback that had been benched the week prior. Yep. Uh, this quarterback's only completed 50 percent of his passes, which is uh, not very yeah, good. It ain't good. So, it ain't good. five touchdowns, six interceptions on the season. Uh, you know, I think they'll probably try to stick to the run game. Defensively, they they have been able to pressure. Um, I think they're towards the top of the SOCON in terms of sacks and tackles for loss. Um, let's see, they've got yeah, twenty one sacks in the season. That's um, good pretty, enough for uh, that's the second surprised the SOCON me. behind Mercer. It surprised yeah. me. Uh, they're not 
they're not as small as I thought they might be. I mean, like I said, I watched the only game I've watched Citadel play was that Western game, and I picked that game because I felt like we were probably going to attack them in a similar way. And while Western's O line did hold up, I was I was surprised at how much pressure Citadel was getting, and that kind of speaks to the one challenge that any team has against an option attack, which is why I love it, is it puts pressure on your offense to operate efficiently because you're not going to have, uh, you know. 15, 20 possessions if you aren't stopping them and getting them off the field. If they're getting two, three first downs every single drive, that's going to add up on the clock. It's going to just put more pressure on Quincy. I think we'll be fine. But if you combine that with the fact that they do force uh, negative plays, could be a little a little recipe for some drama. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, you mentioned it, but – Coming off a big upset win against Mercer, I hope we just don't play down to the competition because this team uh, has managed to score points. I mean, they've scored uh, more than 15 points in all of their games this season except for this past week against VMI. So uh, they can get on the board, and you know it should be an easy dub for Sanford, but we just have to you know, play it to our highest potential. If we had lost, guys, if we had lost to Mercer, how are you feeling about this game? I, I, I'm going to be honest. I would feel much less confident. I would probably even kind of go on a, on the side of a Citadel upset because they just beat VMI on the road coming back home. They have an identity. They play hard enough, uh, and we would be down in the dumps. just depends on how we ever lost. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, the fact that we won makes it even harder. Because like we have that West Georgia game always in the back of our mind. We got that ETSU game two weeks ago in the back of our mind. And all of a sudden we drill a top 10 team. Like, how are you even supposed to think about this team? Yeah. Especially when you punch like the way they won yesterday, the way you punched them in the mouth early, the way it was 28 0 in the first eight minutes. Like we obviously did not did not see that coming as well. Yeah. So can you build off of that what you saw and what you took from uh, basically the first quarter at kind of the second quarter there? Uh, can you push that and move that on the road? Uh, one more thing on Citadel, on the, on the offensive side last week they went uh, they were 0 for 11 on third down against VMI, in which they they still won 13 to 10, but they were 10 for 18 on third down against Western. So that that's really kind of a weird comparison between those two. So if there's if their offense is like last week, you get them into third down, and you can get the ball back to your Sanford defense and say if it can blitz more and get more pressure on Citadel's offensive line and quarterback. Yeah, no, like I said, they played Western well which is why I was very curious about that game. I would have probably watched the Furman game if Furman was good, but they are they have shocked me. We, we'll get to them, State of the SoCon, but they have shocked me uh, this season. <clears throat> One other thing I wanted to mention, uh, and I kind of already said it, but it's hard. To, our offense has been so polarizing. You just, I mean, the Mercer game is a perfect example. We didn't score in the second half. Offensively, didn't score in the second half. Uh, had two or three turnovers in the second half, a lot of short drives. And then in the first half, we're unstoppable. So there is a world where this offense comes out here and is just gunked up in the mud, not doing anything. And Citadel jumps on us early. Obviously, our offense is built to play from behind, but their team is built to keep a lead and kind of strangle you. Um, and that to me, serves as the biggest risk we just need to start well we don't need to start hot right we don't need to like score on three straight possessions and get three straight three and outs but i think we need to score in the first two or three uh and just make sure that we're not giving up a touchdown uh, on the first two or three to them and, and we'll be fine i think it'll be a low scoring game um i don't see our offense putting up 55 again it's capable but i just the odds of that happening after all the other games we've seen this season are pretty low even against a defense like this who is nowhere near the level of mercer um at least statistically as we saw maybe mercer's defense was more of a paper tiger or a paper bear but nice. uh this one this game sh I, I just have a feeling it's going to be a little bit lower scoring which gives citadel a slighter slightly bigger chance of upsetting but uh i still feel pretty good my my score guys i want to hear y'all's is going to is, is about 28 to 7 how are y'all feeling about that? Graham, what's yours? 
Uh, Sanford has won the last five matchups in the series. Last time they lost to Citadel was 2018, which was at Charleston in this series. Um, I think if you can get to 28, you kind of put it out of reach for Citadel, right? So I think like 28 is kind of the magic number they can't come back from. So I will go a Sanford 34 to 10. Maybe Citadel gets a touchdown late, 34 to 10. Yeah, so Citadel's going to score. We're not going to shut them out. Uh, Mike. Yeah, I mean Citadel scored in all their games, and and like you said, Sam, even last week when we put up what fifty five points, mm-hmm. uh, if you subtract the twenty eight that we started off with, essentially we had two pretty decent sustained drives in the, in the at the end of this first half. Yeah, uh, didn't score an offensive touchdown in the second half, so our offense can definitely fall asleep at times. Um, I'm going to say twenty four to ten. You know, I think it'll be. Get the thumbs out, boys. Get the thumbs out. Yeah, yeah. a little too close for comfort at at moments in the game, but I think we'll we'll still win by uh, more than a touchdown. It's dude. It's totally fine. Yeah, that it's that is not an unreasonable score. Uh, I just I just want to. This weekend was stress free until about the third quarter, and then it became stress free again. Thank you, thanks to the defense. I would like another stress free sample game because the season really is in front of us now. We. Kind of said it jokingly last week, but now it really is. There's a, a legitimate path to the playoff for the dogs. But all right, boys, fun trivia this week. Fun trivia. Citadel, rich football history. Uh, I would love for one of you to get this. So this man, looking for a name here. This man was an owner and GM in the NFL for 39 years until his death in 2021. Known for his motto, just win, baby. And he was also the O-line coach for the Citadel in 1955. Who is 1955 O-line coach, NFL GM, owner, just win, baby. It's even more fitting in the city of this that this franchise is located in. I've got it. So all right. I don't Grant, I, I'm this, I have no clue. Grant, who who he got? Uh, no impression this week, but it is uh, Al Davis, former owner of the Raiders. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. Al Davis. Good. Graham, would you have gotten it without that last hint? Uh, no, because the Chiefs just basically tortured his uh, owner existence as an owner the whole time he was there. So that's really the only tough, reason. It was a tough one. It was a he tough does one. not give off military school vibes. I'll he say does that. not. No, uh, no, not at all. Maybe that's why he was only there one season. Might have been there two <laughs> seasons. It's always hard to say. When they say 1955 to 56, was it yeah. 55 and 56 season? Hard to say. God, he, did hard. Hire, yeah, yeah. he did hire Lane Kiffin uh, straight at a, a college, a straight at USC, which is sick. So. That's right. I Yeah, youngest coach in NFL history, right? Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Absurd. Abs- I'm, I'm so glad Lane has found his feet in, in Oxford. Yeah. Um, Although that fan base is ready ready to burn the football program to the ground with their two losses after dropping 15, 20 million on that roster. But and what they're gonna get right this week. So yeah, when Lane spun the uh <laughs> loss last week of I'm really happy that we've turned the expectation around of for us to win, to go into a place and win and no more moral victories. Yeah, but Lane, you lost. Like that's not <laughs> the spin the spin cycle was in full blast right there. All right, boys, state of the SOCON. He's a 20-point favorite this week, so I think he'll find a way to get it done. Yeah, he'll win this week. That, that's an easy dub. he got to score seven points. Uh, all right, state of the SoCon results from the weekend. UTC rolled Wofford. Wofford was the team that we were surprised at first. They're falling back to where they rightfully belong, which is the bottom. Uh, they lost 37-5 to against the Mocs. Citadel, as we said, claimed the Silver Shaco over VMI 13-10 to Western dismantled the paladins 52 to 20 uh and then sanford got the big dog 55 35 over mercer this this week we got sanford at citadel as we just discussed etsu on the road to wofford so one scenario guys is western is the only unbeaten team mercer utc etsu and sanford are all tied for second we still have utc to play uh, and Western. So if we went out, we need ETSU to lose one more game uh, for us to be SoCon champs. So every ETSU game from here on out until we lose again, 
we'll be circling. So this week we we got ETSU at Wofford. I've never cheered for Wofford in my life, but this week go Terriers. Uh, Western at Mercer. So Mercer's get right game could set up the four way tie. I mean, this week is huge. Sanford needs to get take care of business, get the win. But Western at Mercer, come on Bears, beat the Catamounts, create some chaos. And then VMI at UTC, UTC uh, should handle them, especially coming off a of loss to Citadel at home. Poor Rocco. Poor Rocco. I, he needs to keep his job. I don't know what standard VMI expects, but uh, hopefully the seat is not hot for old Rocco. It's funny, Mercer this week gave up 42 first half points, and now they get to host Cole Gonzalez, who was 35 or 55 for 620 and five touchdowns against Furman in their 52 to 20 win. He ain't going to repeat that. Cole Gonzalez. 620 is insane. He had two. uh, Who were those two school guys last year? uh, Sinari and um, their running back. Yeah. He had two guys who went straight to the ACC, propping him up. Oh, Desmond Reed. Thank you. He is the quarterback who I always thought he would be average, average. He is falling back down to earth, Grant, this week. 600. You're clearly thinking something. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I like listening to Sam talk. I think he's funny. Oh, my (laughs) God. Yeah. You just like to hear me embarrass myself. Uh huh. Yeah. Mercer's going to be terrible this year. Ranked number seven coming into the game midway. No, I feel bad for Western having to play Mercer after they got dismantled against us. So I yeah. feel like that's a dub for Mercer, and that puts us in a great position. Yes. Yes, it does. Right. Or Mercer's been exposed and they actually suck. That is my fear, Mike. Because before the season, we were like, how can all these Lenore Ryan kids and yeah, yeah Lenore Ryan kids, it's ETSU who adds Gardner Webb. How could yeah. all these Lenore Ryan kids come out here and turn up in the in the SoCon? I, well, when you turn the ball over four times twice in your yeah. own territory, it's, it's not good. <laughs> but that's what you uh, six and a scoop and score. But that that's compete. the kind that's the Mercer team we expected. Yeah, not this allowing us allowing seven points a game. Yeah, just insane juggernaut defense. I did love how somebody put in the Sanford message board. I sent it to y'all. I said Mercer was number seven this week. They won't be number seven this week. Uh, dude, that's 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 how rankings work, buddy. He's been watching football for over a week. Congratulations. He knows how it works. That's how rankings work. Yeah. But yeah, guys, it's setting up nice. We obviously have to win. I mean, UTC and Western are huge mountains for this team to climb. Uh, but anything's possible we we can't fall asleep in this kind of middle of the season where we really don't have a tough challenge got a couple should be easy conference games a non-conference game it should be easy and then just set it up nicely with two games to end the season buckle up focus it'll be it'll be great last two games yeah so we need to take al davis's motto this week is what you're saying just win baby i thought guys i'm gonna be straight up I was just mentally preparing for basketball season. I was like, the football season is over. Um, we're still going to talk about it, but not. I wouldn't just. I just wouldn't be as excited to discuss it. And now the fire's back. I mean, we are. Well, I want to say we're good. I'm not going to say we're good yet. I'm going to need to see a few more uh, games before I can say that because everyone. We don't know if it's a fluke yet. This Mercer dub, but. Um, Feeling a whole lot better. Anything else before we get to the state of the Bulldogs? Go Wofford. Go Terriers. I'm throwing up in my mouth as I say that. Uh, (laughs) All right. State of the Bulldogs. Grant, kick us off with women's soccer. Sure. Uh, Women's soccer. uh, Today's recording, they had a big tie against ETSU 2-2. They're down 1-0, tied it up. Then they're down 2-1. Had to score late in the 88th minute to get uh, to get the tie, which is a big point, especially ETSU. Could have really? jumped them could jump them in the rankings, too. And then early in the week, beat Mercer 4-2. Another big win. That was, uh, I want to say this is seven straight positive results for soccer. They've won five, and they've tied two. So so for those that don't follow soccer, don't follow soccer ties are good. Ties are good in soccer, so... Yeah. Seven results, seven positive results for them, and and then they've got their last uh, game of the season uh, next week against UNCG. So sh- should be fun for another uh, for another fun conference tournament. Yeah, 
Western sits atop. Uh, they're up by two points, and they have two games left. So most likely going to clinch the regular season and the one seed. But you never know. They play Furman and UTC. Uh, yeah, odds are they're going to win the conference. Uh, Mike, women's volleyball. It's going to be a tight race to the finisher for women's volleyball in SoCon. Sanford's currently in second place, tied with Wofford uh, behind Mercer at the top. They're up by one game right now. Um, so this past week, we beat Citadel 3 0, but dropped a road match against UNCG 1 3. Uh, so we got Wofford this week and then UTC. So that Wofford game will be a big one to come out uh, for sole spot in second place. Yeah, remind us, Mike or Grant, who was it Wofford? That was the juggernaut in volleyball last season? I thought it was uh, Citadel. Or was it Citadel. Yeah, Citadel last year. Okay, okay. Um, interesting that this year there's not just a runaway team. So Sanford is definitely in the thick of it. And yeah, we'll see. St- the vibes are still good on the volleyball court. The women are setting up. We still have quite a few games left. Uh, soccer... I was I was surprised at the difference in season lengths. Soccer only has one game left, which was odd. Uh, but yeah. volleyball, we still got quite a few, so uh, still a little bit of ways to go before we know for sure what our odds are going to look like to win the conference. But still looking really good. Uh, and then Grant, I see you added women's basketball. Yeah, we talked about the men at the top half with their uh, SoCal media poll. Uh, the women were picked to finish tied for third with Furman, and they had Kennedy Langham, who was on the All SoCon team. So Sanford women will have eight upperclassmen, eight juniors and older. So that should be a fun season for them as well, trying to get back after kind of a slow season last year where they battled some injuries, had a young team, lost some transfers, gained some new ones this year. So it'll be exciting uh, with them fighting to fighting to get back to the top of the conference. So it will be uh, excited to see that freshman. We'll see. What, what, what's her name, Grant? I back to back weeks, Claire Johnson. Thank you. I'm not going to remember it until I see her go off for like 30 in a game. Yeah. And then Claire Johnson will just be seared in my mind of like, yeah, that's our stud. There you go. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty decent fall so far for Sanford Sports. It was looking a little bleak there, but football's pulling its weight. Soccer and volleyball are progressing well. Uh, it is, it's, I'm conflicted. You know, I liked the soccer dynasty days. I think those are behind us as the other schools have caught up just from a, we care standpoint. And we're going to put a little bit of money into it standpoint. Um, and the parody is welcomed from a competitive sense. It kind of alleviates the pressure of if we don't win, it was a failure type thing to where it kind of adds back the reward of winning in a weird way. Um, but like I said, I'm conflicted. I don't know if, which one I like more because that UTC the last game. Time... Oh, sorry. No, oh, no, you go ahead, Mike. I so when was the last time that women's soccer didn't win a conference championship two years in a row? That's a good question. Win, yeah. That's well, we question. didn't win last year. Right, right, but if we're not, because it sounds like we're not going to win this oh, year. Oh, 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 oh! So well, it'll be yeah, two years did. in a row we hadn't won. I think before that wasn't it? Didn't we have like a that's a six dang. or ten year streak where we had won at least yeah. either regular season or tournament? I'll have to go yeah, back to get. Yeah, we need to look that up. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I did go back. I mentioned last week. I wasn't sure what the biggest not uh, biggest conference game or biggest top ten game like this last time on campus. And it was 2018 or 2019 top 10 Wofford uh, rolled into Homewood. And uh, I think we won. I can't remember now that I'm thinking about that. I can't remember. Someone, somebody definitely knows. And they have not updated the FCS top 25 yet. One perk, guys, of recording on Monday is they have the new FCS top 25. Curious to see where the other – we are not in it. Uh, everybody can let go of their breath. We are not in it. Um, Receiving Mercer- votes? Probably still fit in the top 15, I would imagine. <laughs> no, um, they will not be seven. That's that's how rankings work. In fact, depending on how the other results happen, they might still stay in the top 10. I mean, one loss doesn't slaughter you. Mm. I'm just curious to see where UTC, ETSU, and Western end up. Because Western was receiving votes last week, and 
there's a chance where we get two, three, that'd be three top 25 wins if we went out, which is spectacular in the, in the situation where we don't win the conference. And that would help alleviate the West Georgia L. Guys, it's just absurd. Like this team, watching that game, we should have drubbed West Georgia. Drubbed. Why did we have to pick the game where they were coming up to the FBS and had everything to prove and blah, 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 blah? It's like, what is going on? This team is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, we're just typical football fans where one week we're just throwing in the towel, the next week we're about to. That's why we upset love it, Mike. North yeah. Dakota State. That's why we <laughs> love it. Football is the best. Basketball yeah, last week. that too, but you just play yeah. so many more times. It doesn't yeah. feel as volatile. Yeah, last week we lose plus four turnover margin. Oh gosh, where's this team go? This week, uh, get a big win. You know, if this happens and this happens, we might be, we might be in the playoffs. Playoffs, we might be in the playoffs. I love it. I do love it. Yeah. Gut Jeez. feeling, Mike. Are we making the playoff this year? Gut feeling, basketball or football? No, no, because we've got the two biggest games of the season to end the season. Oh, yeah, yeah that, it's tough. It's tough. Grant, gut feeling. Probably it's hard to answer right now with obviously those games looming, but I would have to say no, probably. But yeah, my gut say no. Too. But but but, who, but who knows part, what could happen? There's a couple zero margin for error. Things. That's the problem. Exactly. I yeah. know. That yeah, does get, we're not really the crispest team, you know. No, we are. Yeah, not you gotta. Crispest. Yeah, you gotta run the table. We like a little margin. We're close to it. <laughs> yeah, we like a lot of margin. <laughs> a lot of margin for error. <laughs> It's like, oh, touchdown holding call. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> At least that seems to be behind us. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, all right, boys. Anything else before we wrap it up? Hopefully, we've got a snoozer next week, but yeah. we'll see. Uh, one more thing. Sanford is basketball is having their kind of preseason event. Remember last year they did it in downtown Homewood. This oh, year, yeah. it's it's at the Pete Hanna Center on Thursday, the 24th. Doors open at 630, starts at 7. Students have the chance to win cash prizes, a PS5, TVs, and Apple Watch even. Uh, they're giving away a uh, SoCon championship. Lo- okay, okay. Replica rings, doing basketball, all this fun stuff. The so. basketball no, program needs to put rings. some clothes on. We don't need to be that desperate over here. Come on. Cash. Uh, student- I thought you were saying they're giving out SoCon championship game tickets. It's like, wow, that's <laughs> not <laughs> With a hotel package, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah that would be, had the double tree in Asheville's calling their name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Meet the teams, and there's an autograph session as well for kids and families and whatnot. So that's cool. That's cool. We yeah. get to we get to re- learn all the the whole team this year. Uh, the worst part of college sports nowadays is just not knowing anybody. At least Ryland's back. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's it. Sweet. Uh, cannot wait for basketball preview. When are we? What? When is our first game, Grant? We got to figure that out. First game for the men is November fourth. Oh, snap. Okay. So yeah, next host- week we'll have our preview episode. Yeah, hosting Mississippi College, and then the women's opener is the fifth at Tennessee. So they're Ooh. starting off hot. It's not about that. Yeah. Okay. New regime in Knoxville. Yeah. Dang. They're going to play fast. That will be a uh, nice L, but still very fun yeah. for the girls to get up there and go play uh, yeah. at such a storied program. All right, yeah, the women. Fifth. Yeah, the women have a big non-conference coming up. We'll get into that later. But yeah, they've got some big games on their schedule. Okay. Then we need to carve out even more time for the women's, especially if we're good this year. We have to be good, though. We have to be good. Um, all right, so we have that next week. Going to be interesting. Going to be interesting. I hate Almost the there. old flip of a coin in the transfer portal. Some of these guys are going to suck. Inevitably, some of them are going to suck. Uh, hopefully, more are good than not, but we'll see. For, for for every Zach Love day, there's a Ryland Jones. So you get you got to find that balance. Yeah, but we got D one players like Power Five players that actually played. It's different. Yeah, that's fair. It can be. It can be. It but sometimes should be. That, the hoop changes. You know, like the floor becomes a little bit smaller and the basket a little bit smaller. You know, it's all Homewood's an interesting place. We'll see. We'll see. And the ceiling is the roof, so it's, that's all fine. <laughs> So we're not getting out of Birmingham is what you're telling me. I really don't know what that means. I just liked when Michael Jordan said it. Like no one still knows what it means when he said it, but if he said it, we're like, Oh yeah, we're going to use that. The way I heard it was (laughs) the ceiling is our potential. And if our potential is the roof, then we're not getting out of the, I don't know if it means anything, honestly. (laughs) Interesting. 
Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. We got Citadel this week. Basketball preview next week. Post game next week. Uh, a lot of good stuff. Until then, everybody enjoy the week. Hopefully, it's not Yankees Dodgers World Series. Please, everybody. State, state of the Bulldogs.com. That's right. And subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have left, if you've made it this far. Uh, have a good week, everybody. <laughs>